Hello and welcome back to Building Integrity. I'm your host, Josh Porter, and in this video, we're gonna be talking uh, more about Champlain Towers South in Surfside, uh, Miami, Florida. And we're gonna be talking all in this video about the roof and questions that have been popping up about the roof, what was going on with the roof work. And so we're gonna kind of go through that video and analyze some things. Uh, one of the first questions that uh, got asked or, or that I've been seeing asked a lot is, you know, why did the construction work start on the roof? Uh, second question was, was, was the roof overloaded? Did that, was that a contributing factor to that portion of the building collapsing? And then the third question, which I, I found interesting, but worth uh, investigating, and we'll do that in this video as well, is did the roof portion actually collapse first and then the rest of it came down from the bottom up? Um, which was posited uh, by, by another engineer that I saw on the internet and I thought that was an interesting thing to explore and we'll explore that in this video. Okay, so the first uh, question is why, why start on the roof? I'm gonna switch you guys over here to a photo um, right after the work and, and, and I'm gonna explain some of the things in this photo and in the zoomed in portion of this photo. But um, the video, the, um, the, the permits for the construction work started on the roof and part of that permit process was to install uh, what are called davits and I'll show you a picture of that. But a davit is essentially this steel anchor and what they do is they will um, you know, cut open a section of the roof uh, before, before uh, the rest of the roofing work begins, okay? So they'll cut open this like rectangular cavity, if you will, and so that they can access the concrete deck, okay? So the concrete deck being you know, down here. And then what they'll do is they'll install these davits, uh, these anchors into the concrete uh, with bolts and sometimes epoxy or expansion bolts or whatever. And then they'll fill all that roofing back in and they will taper the roofing up the davit uh, in, sor in order to that it's sealed so that water doesn't get into the roofing uh, system. So what you'll see typically on these roofing projects is they'll do the davits first and then they'll do the rest of the roof. So, that, so these, this patching is basically just a temporary patching because it's going to get torn off as soon as they do the rest of the roof. Um, but this allows them to be able to tie their workers off to the roof and to remain safe. And so if you look back at this photo, you can see um, these davits have been installed at numerous locations on the roof. Here's two here. Here's another one there. Another one there. And if and, and a lot of what people have been talking about, like in the news and in... Um, and in other videos, you know, on YouTube and stuff is that these davits for, were for window washers. Well, the reality is, is that you, under current Florida code and law, you really can't be dropping swing stages around a building. And if you want to know what swing stages are, you, you can go back and, and, and check out our channel. We have a whole video about swing stages. Um, it's not very good because it was one of our first videos we ever made. But check it out, that will at least explain what, what, what uh, swing stages are. But this building, in order to restore this building, would have had to have been done with swing stages. And when you're on the swing stage, you're wearing a harness and your harness needs to be tied off to a rope. That rope needs to be tied off to something that's independent of the swing stage. So oftentimes you will, you will tie yourself off to one of these davits, okay? So that if anything happens to the swing stage and it falls out from under you, you're still hanging from the side of the building and, and, and you're safe. Okay, so that work, most of that davit work look, that was in the permit looks like it was done and you can actually see the, the rectangle patches I was talking about around, around the roof. You can see it's a rectangular there. They went ahead and did one long rectangle here to take care of two of them. So they, 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 those are those roof patches. The roof hadn't been replaced yet. And so that's what I want to draw your attention to uh, here. You can see this dark uh, bundle and you can see this um, green color and there's another picture of it. There's, there's several of these bundles on the roof. And on the upper left here, you can see there's a, um, a large blow up of what I'm talking about. And what this is, is this is roofing materials, rolled roofing materials. So it looks like, and the green is a tarp that they would keep over it to keep the rain and weather off of the roofing materials. So it looks like these roofing materials had been brought onto the roof. You can see them um, you know, in, in, in this picture here. But this is also a different angle, and, and I think there was two other locations I saw where these bundles of, of roofing rolls were put onto the roof. So before the building collapsed, the roofing contractor was in progress of re-roofing the building and they were bringing up dry-in materials um, to, to, uh, to aid and, or to be used, I should say, in replacing the roof um, at Champlain Tower South. So that kind of leads us to the second question was, well, was the roof overloaded? 
And so where, where, where the section that had collapsed, did they put a whole bunch of these bundles maybe in one area and it was just too much for the building to take. And then overnight, when the building uh, contracts due to lower temperatures in the evening, because every, every building goes through a cycle, thermal expansion and contraction. A lot of people don't know this, but buildings breathe almost like your lungs. They expand during the day when it warms up and they shrink down at night a little bit when it, when it cools down. So during the cooling phase, new stresses can be induced and if the roof was overloaded, could that have been a contributing factor to, to that or causing the roof to collapse first, which we'll get to a little later in the video. <clears throat> okay, so, the, uh, so, so I'll, I'll answer those questions uh, when we look at some photos further on. I wanted to uh, make some minor corrections to our collapse diagram. So if you remember my first color-coded collapse diagram, which I'm showing you here, but uh, I've already modified it for this image, um, it looked slightly different. But upon reanalysis of the video and um, and seeing more work that's being done by by other uh, uh, folks on the internet and people like you guys who have been sending us information and data and emails and stuff, um, which have been all been very helpful, I've sort of adjusted and modified um, the the colors on this to kind of show um, that like when the first section came down, it actually did not uh, stop here. Okay, it actually stopped over here, and so. Really, the, the whole portion that first started collapsing was this entire portion. And I will show that to you uh, in the collapse video. We have some still frames of that. But it does go all the way out to here. Um, and then the yellow portion that was remaining was sort of L-shaped like this. Okay? As best that we know. It was, it was somewhat L-shaped. It may have been shaped like this. Okay? And this might have been the second part to fall. It, you, you really, it's very difficult to see in the video but I suspect it was probably L-shaped. And the reason why I suspect that is because a lot of people felt that the reason why this yellow portion, the, the, the very easterly portion of the building, uh, stayed up for a couple extra seconds was because of the stairwell tower and the shear walls there. So if the, that stairwell tower, tower was already gone and the shear walls were already completely gone, then, then yes, then I would have expected this whole easterly side uh, uh, this is the whole easterly side over here. I would have expected that whole area to have collapsed at the same time that, that uh, uh, this area had collapsed, area number one, okay? But, but it didn't, it held on for a couple more seconds. So we believe that's because of this uh, stairwell area and then that finally collapsed and then that, that the yellow portion came down. Okay, and then of course the, uh, the, the second portion, we had numbered these things in order in which they collapsed. There was one, two, and then three. And we analyzed that in one of the previous uh, videos on the channel. If you look at the second area, that also needed an, adju an adjustment because as a lot of people pointed out um, after I made some of the first videos that actually there was a little bit of area over here that also was removed. And if you look at the building, uh, uh, the fourth section that was uh, remaining, which they've now demolished, but um, that was remaining while they were con uh, started the, uh, the rescue efforts, uh, this fourth portion, when you look at photos and stuff, you can clearly tell that this chunk uh, here is is missing out of out of that building. So that that chunk would have went with the um, With the second part here. Okay, so that's just I just wanted to kind of uh, uh, Let you guys know because a lot of people keep going back and looking at the other video and they're like, oh, he's got it wrong It's but these are really minor tweaks and adjustments to the overall arching theme Which is section one went down started going down first section two followed section three followed. Okay Okay so here is the first uh, still, image still from the video of the collapse. I'm not gonna show you the video of the collapse because um, you've seen it and you can find it all over the internet, but this is the first uh, still image of that video. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is these lights, okay? Because a lot of people talk about these lights and they say, oh, look, these, these lights here, these big flashes, or what appear to be flashes on the left, but just lights on the right. This is somehow like proof that uh, there was explo you know, uh, explosives or something like that used. I don't think that's proof of explosives. Um, I, think, I think it's pretty obvious that most of these uh, lights here are rectangles because those units were still lit for the first frame of this video. Um, I think these brighter lights may just be because the light on the balcony or something was happened to be facing the, the camera and gave it more of a glare. Or it could have been that something did explode in the unit, you know, a TV or a light or, I mean, it would have to be something, you know, we would have to think creatively, but it could be something that would, um, that could have exploded. But if you look at the very next frame, 
okay? I mean, not we're not talking the next second. We're talking the next frame in the image. The, these lights in the, are gone. I, I'm, I'm more of the opinion that these are just lights inside a unit. And maybe they're like the newer, brighter LEDs or whatever. And it just caused a little bit more glare on the lens. But that's the reason why they look a little different. Okay. So let's, we're talking about the roof in this video and let's analyze a couple of the questions. Um, did the roof collapse first? So here what I did was I took that, that, that still image from, the, from, this, uh, from this, the very first frame of the video and I brought it over here and I kind of enhanced the contrast a little bit so that we can see it a little better uh, for the video. And then I brought up a, um, the Google 3D rendering thing, which really isn't that great as far as resolution quality, but we don't need it for resolution quality. We need it to explain some concepts here, which is really what all these videos are about is explaining engineering and construction concepts. If you look at the uh, building picture down here in the bottom left, you'll see that this is the ninth floor here. And then you have the 10th floor here, the 11th floor here, and the 12th floor here. And then above that is the penthouse. So technically, and I've kind of counted these a bunch. I mean, you got basically eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then you got the basement. So technically, we would I would technically call this a 13-story building, but um, I understand that, that the penthouse was added later. That's going to be for another video. Um, but this sort of defines, the uh, main thing I want you to focus on is floors 9 uh, through the penthouse, 9, 10, 11, 12, and the penthouse, okay? Now, the other thing I want to uh, be able to show you is if you see these double, how do we know where the ninth floor is uh, on this video, right? On this, on this screen grab. Well, we can look at where the, the, these two uh, light lines are, these sections of wall. Okay, and they're they're uh, they're surrounding a window wall in between them. Okay, and it's very it's a very obvious um, part of the building, and you can see that part of the building right here. Okay, now if you notice, the top of those double lines is the ninth floor. So this dark area that you're seeing here is the ninth floor. Every area that you're seeing between that's light colored. That's the, because you, you got to remember the angle at which the camera's looking up. You're actually looking at this painted ceiling of the lanai above it, okay? So, but if you want to focus on the dark lines, this is the ninth floor. That means this is the 10th floor, 11th floor, 12th floor, and penthouse. And this dark area above the penthouse, uh, I should really kind of draw it just so it's an arrow. Okay, this dark area above the penthouse, that is the parapet wall. A parapet is a short like a knee wall that is on the uh, oftentimes uh, installed around the perimeter of flat roofs. Okay, and so you can see that uh, you can see that right here as well. You can see that uh, parapet wall right there. I can write it. Okay, so uh, so so why is this important? Okay, well if you look at this uh, this double white line feature here that we're talking about right here. Okay. And if you look at the balconies and the parapet right here for the penthouse, okay, let's get rid of this. Let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so if you look at that, you will see that these white lines are generally centered on that. When we draw C with a line where that's indicating the center point, okay, of something. So that this wall feature here is generally centered from the outer corner of the building over to where the first balcony ends for the, um, for the penthouse. So you can see that here, if we draw those same lines, here's your center point, here's your corner, and here's your other corner, okay? So, the, uh, I kind of drew it a little, not straight, but the, the, those generally correlate. Now, if you look at the, um, the parapet wall, okay, for this, and you look at the, the penthouse floor here, and you look at the next parapet down or the roof down and the next floor. So you got the 12th floor. We're talking the penthouse and 12th floor here. Okay. The question is, is where are those in this video? Okay. Oops. All right. So that's in this, this is what has created this idea that, well, by the time the first frame started, the building was already in motion. I actually agree with that now. I mean, I think this is pretty clear that this portion of the, this center portion of the building here, okay, had fallen uh, or begun to fall or something fell prior to the very first frame of the collapsed video. 
I think that's pretty clear. And, and so the question then is, is well, what, what, is, what is this right here? Like, what, why are we missing this? So um, some of the people that I have seen, uh, you know, proffering ideas and concepts and ideas are saying, well, I believe that, uh, that this proves that the roof was overloaded and that the roof collapsed. And then after the roof collapsed to here, uh, then the rest of the building collapsed afterwards because of the shock wave that would have went down the building. So let's look at that and let's think about that and analyze it. With the same uh, concepts that we can use to describe where uh, the ninth floor was in this image, okay, we can also define some of the floors in the adjacent image. So if you see this wall right here, down in the bottom left, I'm circling it in red. This wall right here has a white wall between two sets of you know, dark windows, essentially. Okay, well, if you look at that, you can actually see that here, here's your two sets of dark windows, okay? And here's your light colored wall in between them. Well, if you, if you, if you, if you look at your floors, okay, that white wall ends between the 11th and 12th floor. So right here, and then you see that there's a dark area above that, which is the sliding glass doors and the windows above it. So that ends right here. So right here, we know that this should be the 11th floor, okay? with the lights, so the lights were on in this, in this unit. Uh, and then this is your 12th floor, all right, that dark area. And then right here is your penthouse, okay? And we know that from looking at, uh, from looking at just, you know, comparative analysis between the two images. So the question is, so then that's your penthouse, well, that's your penthouse roof. So I think from looking at this in this way, we can pretty comfortably say that the penthouse and the 12th floor did not collapse down onto the 11th floor, but that by the time this video started, the um, first two floors of the building essentially for, for this area, okay, for that area down, the first two floors had already um, collapsed by the time the video started recording. And that kind of lends some credence to maybe some delay in the video and the idea that some people were saying, and, and I think that's probably accurate, that, that the video was um, uh, most likely like a motion sensor captured. Uh, so it was triggered by motion. Uh, but the being this building was so far away from the camera, um, I, don't know if, I don't know if it was captured by motion but, or not, but for whatever reason, we're missing the first you know, half a second or, or fraction of a second of this building collapsing. But by looking at these images, you can see that these um, floors are clearly lower than where they should be. They, the penthouse, the top of the penthouse should be up here, not down here. So you can see that it has dropped about 15 to 20 feet um, already uh, uh, from where it should be. And the question you might say is, wow, well, yes, but if this whole section, Josh, dropped, okay, if this dropped down, then uh, why in the heck are these lights still on? Um, and I think if you look at the very next frame, I mean, again, I'm not talking the next second, I'm talking the next frame of this, of this video, those lights are all off. But I think part of the reason why those lights were able to stay on for the first 15 or 20 feet is because of the way that they get power and the power lines and the, and the power runs down to the ground floor and into the basement. So you can kind of think of those power lines possibly as uh, not possibly, but, 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 but the only way that this would work is if you have uh, pipes in the ground floor of the garage that the conduit that the line, uh, power is in and those conduits break or whatever, but the power, there's a, there's a fraction of a second, probably less than a half a second where those cables are kind of in the pipe and they're bundling down and power still being fed up through them during the first 10, 15, 20 feet. But then eventually the, 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 uh, the power lines become so damaged, the wire becomes so damaged that you lose power to these upper floors and those lights go off. It would be really strange if we saw those lights on the entire time that the building was falling in this video. Okay. So the question uh, also is uh, getting back to did the roof collapse first? Not only is that my only um, argument or my only thought on that analysis, but there's another way you can look at this as well. So here's a Google image, uh, and there's some drone footages and stuff too that show it, but I like this one because it shows it the most clearly. There's a couple features on the roof that I think are interesting. Um, and one of them is uh, this, this uh, stairway that went up into the elevator mechanical room, okay? And then we also have some uh, air conditioning mechanical equipment here, and you can see that there's actually um, some, red, uh, some red iron steel 
that that sits on. And if you actually want to know what that looks like, you can go back to the Morabito report and you will see that they actually took a photo on the roof of this red steel. And if you remember in that video, I was I said, when I looked at that photo, I said, that doesn't really alarm me. That's not a lot of rust for that kind of red steel. But, but none, nonetheless, the reason why I bring it up is because it's literally the only thing on the roof that's painted a bright red. And of course this, um, this stairway here also it has some very distinguishing looks and marks as well. So if this section of the roof, okay, were to have collapsed down two floors, which again, based on the previous analysis, uh, video analysis I just did, doesn't look like it. But if this had collapsed down, you would have expected these stairs to have, uh, have gone down with it, the 20 feet. And then by the time this portion of the building fell on top of it, it would essentially have buried this, um, this stairway up into the mechanical room, right? So, uh, so if we look at the next uh, photo, this is, um, this is one of my, one of my uh, favorite photos forensically of the entire site because there's so much information on this photo that we can learn and that we can glean. But this photo was taken, um, I'm, I'm guessing the very next morning, almost immediately after you know, people started mobilizing and getting there. You can obviously see there's, there's, a, there's a rescue you know, dog there, but there's no, there is no cleanup crew. There's, no, there's nobody pulling materials off. There's no crane lifting materials off. There's nothing else on, in this picture indicating that serious rescue efforts and, and, and deconstruction efforts uh, were being underway, which would place this photo on the first day. I tried to find where this photo came from again, and, uh, and, and, and in my record keeping, I, I lost track of where it came from. I'm sure you guys will tell me, but I believe this is from the first day. There's lots of interesting things you can see in this photo, uh, which we'll be talking about in future videos like uh, why is that column still standing up and what is punched through shear why does it matter um, is this column under reinforced which goes back to um, the original uh, construction drawings was the building uh, improperly built that'll be another video but that's not why i'm showing the picture here today in this video uh, the main thing i wanted to look at in this picture was two unique features one the red iron and the and the mechanical equipment is sitting on the very tip top of the rubble on this portion of the photo in this building. And so this would indicate to me that, um, that the, the upper, this is one of the things that would indicate to me that those upper floors didn't collapse down first and then everything else collapsed, which would have swallowed that in, but that it literally started collapsing at the bottom first and this equipment that was on the roof uh, that we're talking about right here would have just simply followed its way down and would have landed on the top of the rubble. Uh, more telling than even the mechanical equipment is that this appears right here to be a portion of those stairs, those aluminum stairs that would have went up to the mechanical room um, over, that, over that last image. I'll show you right here. All right, so here's those stairs that we're talking about, okay, that went up into the mechanical room. Those are typically built out of aluminum. I've seen other photos. They also had guardrails and stuff, so it may be flipped over on its way down. But again, if this portion of the building had fallen first, uh, they would have taken those stairs with it and then if and, and I'm talking if the upper floors Sorry, if that area collapsed it would have taken the stairs with it And then the stairs would have been covered in a, a massive amount of debris But yet you can see that the stairs are pretty much sitting right on top of the uh, rubble now Some people said well that might look like a ladder. It might be to me. It looks like the stairs um, The treads look pretty wide and, and of course you're not gonna be able to see that on YouTube But if you find this image yourself, you can kind of zoom in on it You can see that the rungs or the or the uh, treads are pretty pretty deep um, I don't think it's a ladder. Uh, I don't. I definitely don't think it's a ladder from anybody who was doing rescue work or anything out here yet, because those ladders hadn't been brought out yet. Could it have been a ladder from the roofing contractor who left it on the roof? Well, that's a possibility. But think about this: if this is just a ladder, okay, we're talking about this object right here, okay. If that's just a ladder and it is, uh, and it was left on top of the roof by the roofers, then that still lends to my argument that if it's on the very tip top of the roof, it simply followed the collapse of the whole thing down and it was still resting on the top of the roof. Okay, here's another angle uh, you can see of, of that uh, uh, red iron. So, so again, this photo was taken the next day. You can see that there's, n there's literally nobody standing on top of this. There's no crane, there's nobody removing material from this building uh, at this point. So, so rescue workers were just showing up, they're just coordinating, you can actually see them, they're you know, doing a briefing over here and they're, they're planning out what they're gonna do over here. Um, so this is, this is pretty much the morning after the collapse. 
In this photo, you can also see bundles of roofing material that we talked about in the, in, uh, earlier in this video. You can see more bundles over here of roofing material. You can actually see the material waste that the roofer left on the roof uh, that he just hadn't cleaned up yet um, from all the davit work that they had done. So this kind of ties everything back together, this picture of what we're talking about. But here you can see that red iron and that mechanical AC support there, okay? And you can see, it's very hard to tell, but you can actually see the stairs. You might need to, to uh, I tried to zoom in on it for you better, but uh, uh, I, I, I wasn't able to do it on this program. But the, um, that, that right there, if you look in the photo clear online, you can actually find that that is where that ladder or those stairs are. And you can actually see that there, it's not a stair or ladder, I'm sorry, that was brought out by rescue, because you can actually see a little piece of roofing material debris sitting on top of the ladder. So. Okay, but it's not buried, right? So it's sitting on top. So you've got the red iron and you've got the, la the, you've got the stairs up to the mechanical room sitting on top of the debris. Combine that with what we talked about um, on the video analysis here showing that uh, yes, this area is missing from this frame of the image, uh, but that uh, it appears that it's because the rest of this had already started dropping down. Okay, not because the roof had collapsed in. And then if you look at these pieces, that sort of, and you look at the the iron uh, red iron sitting here you'll 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 uh you'll kind of conclude i would think similarly that i have that um that the top floors did not pancake or collapse in on themselves before the bottom floors got out that goes back to really all the other videos and all the other things of that that this problem the the initial collapse started at the base started at the uh, parking garage or actually now we know it started at the um, pool deck and then the parking garage below and then took that building down okay so in conclusion, uh, oh, I did get a zoom in here for you. I, I forgot, I made another one. Anyway, so here you can see that, that, that stair right there, okay? And then of course, it's very obvious that you can see all the red steel and the mechanical equipment that was sitting on top of the roof. So this stuff, again, is sitting right on top of the debris. So uh, some, some, some final thoughts. Um, I think the sequence of events uh, still centers around that, the, uh, that the, the initial rupture and collapsing started at the ground level, at the lower level, um, and that the collapse did occur in the three sections as we, as we pointed out uh, before. And so I kind of uh, teased a little bit about what we're gonna be talking about in the next video. Um, but the next one we're going to do is going to be really interesting because we're going to be talking about something that nobody has been looking at, and that is how the foundation was actually constructed. And I think there are some discrepancies in the plans and some notes on the plans that really, and we're talking the 1979 plans, that really call into question some, some very fundamental things with the foundation of this building. Now, they'll be able to suss that out and figure it out once all the other material is off the site, but we're going to do a video on that and talk about that because I think you'll find that really interesting. Well, that will do it for this video, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Take care.